people from Lolo Ferry people in mythology. No, that is the ecological system that the African broke down. It's inside of your goddamn body, and it's all in the melanin. But it, when you get to the actual dream time, you get to the actual dream time, then you can tap into some of this shit, and it heals your ass. You see what I'm saying? As well as insects. We talked about the last time. In a deep part of the lust thing, you bring up these shits. You see, uh, you bring up, you bring up these shits and all. You see, there is a, there is a, a connection with the brothers being locked up in prison, and the five yard tumors in black women, because the black hole ain't meeting the black hole. <laughs> So that means the healing assets, the alchemical healing assets, spec is not working because there's things in the latent root chakra called the A chakra that's so far deep, and the only way it's pulled up is through lust and sex. We talked about that the last time. But also there's latent parts in the sleep aspect. So all this is going on also in this particular part with the sleep deprivation going down. Going back to this, with the parallel universe, this is universe A. This is, uni this is universe A. We're trying to get the universe B. Universe B is separated by the black hole. The black hole, the one that is dealing with this, is in Sagittarius. Also, the black hole is in the black woman. Your black hole, you know what I'm talking about. The vesica. You see the vesica? The eye, the way they say the vesica, which is the vagina. You see what I'm saying? Now, going back, y'all bear with me now, hold on. Because it all adds up. Now. It all adds up. This, this, uh, this is Crawley book, only book. Alice Crawley Atlantis, but this is the only book that you can't get. But it, because Alice Crawley explained in here what Atlantis was, the word the African root Atlas is an offshoot of the range was the true Atlas supported by the ancient world by the moral and magical strength, and hence the name Fable Globe Bearer. The root is Lemurian Tala, a Talos, which means black, and which will appear in due course. The A is the feminine pretense that derived from the shape of the mouth. Well, there's your vesica also. And uttering the sound, the black woman is therefore the true translation to the word Atlantis. This is this is why this shit, this is why this, this is the only one that ain't in print. It's about like that Rudolph Steiner book. The one where they got the Yahoo story, which she set up uh, the, the island of Dr. Moreau with H.G. Wells. His book, The Atlantis and Lemuria, uh, Rudolph Steiner, is the only one you can't get. You can get it from health research, but you can't get it. But all the rest of his books is on the shelf. But this is the only Alice Crowley book, one of the few ones that you can't get, because he tell you at the beginning of the shit, the word Atlantis means black woman. And if you really want to break that down, Atlantis is twix your legs. The word Twix ain't no candy bar. It's Twix your legs. <laughs> Between your legs. Twix your legs. The key here is, Dr. Ben said it, that heaven is, is in between the legs of the black woman. You see? But the original, in the temple of Dendera, the, the original, you see the, the hippopotamus goddess Apet, and then you see this thigh. And they say, we came from the thigh. That's what the Egyptians say, the thigh. The cooter cat, or whatever you want to call the shit. <laughs> Plain old pussy. Yeah. Yeah. Holy of holies. <laughs> and a nigga done got holy and said the word holy when he's been up in that shit the right way. <laughs> now, there was one story about a brother. He was in there, he was getting some. And the bro he was in there, and his friends came. And they had a feather tickling him on the leg while he was getting some. But that brother was doing his leg like this. He was not trying to get up off it, though. He was like, fuck that. I ain't getting up off this shit. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, the black hole is also the black woman. And remember they're talking about, I've been telling you that they've been trying to pair the black woman up with the white man? Yes. Mm. And remember now, you can't get these latent forces by fucking with Beaver Cleaver. And the brother can't get these latent forces by fucking with Miss Ann. Know what I'm saying? But they even got a new, a new uh, Bell Sock commercial where the little white boy, they're playing goddamn the atomic dog. He said, why must I chase the cat? Right. It's a white boy on the damn couch with a black girl. Right. He talking about some nice cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she can't hear him because the music's so loud and he rings the phone and she pull out her little cell phone. He say nice cheese and she go over and she give it to the little white boy. The white boy slide over but they got the atomic dog shit. Why must I be like that? Why must I chase the cat? So they're still trying to make it feasible so the sister can go and goddamn Beaver Cleaver. You see what I'm saying? Or Miss Ann. Well, you know goddamn Miss Ann and won that, that game. I will say, in 2000, 2001, that the black man's greatest contribution is he loved that goddamn white woman. That's the greatest contribution of the black man in the motherfucking 20th century is he loved that goddamn white woman. Let's not be funny with this mess. So Miss Ann got him. You see what I'm saying? But the key here is the parallel universe is there's a black hole, but they got the Sagittarius and, and, and remember now, they got a hierarchy telling them, you better shut shit down because we ride on the verge of some shit. So they get the Sagittarius where the black hole is, and they say what? History on hold. You've been hearing this all during the election. History on hold. Now, let's go on. The Book of the Law which was given by Awas, a, a, a tall black man in his 30s with the face of an African king or a savage king, was Awas that gave the book of the law to Alistair Crowley in 1904. In, 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 in 1904. The name of the book of law is called Liber Al Legis. The book of the law, Liber Al Legis. Al Gore. Lieberman. You put it together, you get Book of the Law. And now, you motherfucker might fuck around and win based on yesterday. Oh, this shit is a ritual. Al Gore, Joseph Lieberman, Lieber Al, which is the Book of the Law. What we're talking about here is a mass ritual going on. Okay, okay let's roll. Y'all all right? Yeah. Because it's shit now, but see, now, it comes a time where we got to take the shit off of the, boat, the drawing board, and we got to go to reality. So y'all stick with me on this one. Because it was, huh? I said break the codes, brother. Break the codes on this one. You stick with me on this one. Because for eight years, I ain't heard nothing from them, and these motherfuckers showed up on my goddamn birthday to kill a nigga. And let's get with that in a few minutes. So we talking about some stuff that's going down. And y'all just hold on one minute, and let's deal with some stuff. Okay. All right. Um, now, as Deborah Blair says, that they are stopping because they don't want the reptilians to come in. Well, then again, I explained that we are the reptilians. It just means kundalini race or the dragon, the kundalini race, or, or the people who have access to the third eye, the real power. You see what I'm saying? Um, the real power that they talked about. Now, so... Now going on, uh, it's um. Let me get this particular thing here. It's interesting because in this book, Lost Light, he talks about the trial <coughs> in a mentor. So the great trial or the great judgment that you hear in the Bible and all that type of stuff. If you trace it back to Kemet, it's the great trial of Maya. Great trial of Maya. Now, first of all, what they're also saying here that it can very well be, because even your boy in his uh, book, it's Stephen Hawkins, and they got it, the astrophysicist, or whatever they call him, 
say that there's the end of the universe, and the end of the universe is a small primordial, primordial point. That's the same thing the Egyptians say. They call it the Hadid point. But based on this, because Atlantis is also Eden, they talk about return to Eden. The aborigines talk about a return to dream time. What they understand and what they know, because I gave you the, the prophecy the last time that the white people say that the Africans in America, the Africans in America, Africans in America are the heirs to the earth. Remember I talked about that the last time. What I'm saying here is, did they say there's an end to the universe and there's one small invisible seed? that there could be one black woman here in America that holds the entire universe in between her legs. That's how the shit go. So that's so they can kill off all the motherfuckers they want. They can't pick the right one. That's what the messianic thing, it could be one sister. That's what this shit is talking about. It's going back to one black woman. Well, science tell you they trace shit, one shit back to one, one black woman. Yeah. Lucy. You see what I'm saying? Right. In damn equatorial Africa, uh, Kilimanjaro, you see what I'm saying? Lake Victoria, what's what I say, Lake Nianza, New Wanza, they trace the shit back to that particular part at the beginning of the Nile where the god Hopi dwells. Yes. But they trace it back. So we're talking about this very well. It could be one single black woman in America. Because they say that the seeds will be mixed together in America. First of all, we got Evo, we got Hauser, we got Dogon, we got ancient Egyptian, we got all the tribes is in the blood system of the black people in the indigenous land of the islands and the diaspora, the great diaspora. That's mixed together, but especially here in America, they really mix motherfuckers up. Because that black, black, like I said, they brought smaller groups and broke them up. You see, in the islands, they brought big groups. That's why they was able to be some of your first rebellions. They brought big groups, and it was in a climate, in a tropical climate, and they was able to rebel. Here, we did, they had almost over 100 rebellions here, they ain't telling you about, but they brought smaller groups. And they broke them up. And there was no Evo Hauser, Yoruba, Dogon, all this kind of stuff here. They just put you all together. So we got all of that in our veins. That's called a great mixing bowl here in America. That's why the book says that there will be some Egyptians in America. But they call it a great mixing bowl. And I talked about the Shekinah. And I talked about the Mayat. And I talked about the primordial great mother. But all this stuff is to bring this particular mixing bowl back together. In the Sanskrit, they say that you have Rada, you have another one, there's another, it's, it's about three or four different deities that mean the same thing. And they say she has all of the ancestors inside of her body. This prime, this, this being is going to be here in the last days. So we are talking about very well one sister. You see what I'm saying? We always get the male shit, we never get that female aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? Sister asked me about five years ago in New York, but what about the goddamn woman being the Messiah? You see what I'm saying? What about the black woman being the Messiah? So, this book that they're talking about is very well mean that, but we're talking about the same black hole, you see what I'm saying, coming from Sagittarius, where they gotta shut down the damn government. So, in Alvin Boyd Kuhn's book, he said that they're going to be a great trial. They've been talking about the great trial. Half of that trial, I know, had it going on in 1995 with the O.J. shit. See, some shit is just too big that you cannot, that it's something that's so big that you can find it in, in fucking ancient scripture. It's called a trial in a mentor. But a mentor is the earth. So they talk about it, it's called a double trial. If you notice... They shut this thing down. And although it's them that shut it down, it's fake. But it's not fake. They did not, see, this shit is major. Why? Because on one aspect, you say, well, you know, the government, they shut shit down. They mess with people's head, mind control. But you must have to ask this question. 
Why? Why shut it down at this particular time? That means I told you before they got this hierarchy, and the hierarchy is telling them what to do. We will tell you when the time is up, and you got to act accordingly. Y'all getting this? So they shut the thing down. In here, they got a, a section called Weighed in the Balance, where they talk about a great trial, a, 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 a great trial, on page 180, this is Alvin Boy Q's book, Lost Light, where they say that there's a trial, the trial, he proved that the trial that was supposed to be the great trial and the great judgment in heaven, he says it's going to go on, on earth. Because when you trace it to a mentor, a mentor means the deepest part of the subconscious, it also means the earth. So they said it's going to go on, on earth. So now, let's look at this shit because goddamn they convene in courts every day. Shit, you might go to jail and be in there two years before you get a damn trial. These motherfuckers have court at midnight. They was in court last night. Now, Ted Copper said, Ted Copper said, he said, this is one of the most important times in American history. So please forgive us if we go on a little further tonight. He said, this shit is serious. They got the guy, George Stephanopoulos, he came on and he said, we are experiencing total chaos. That's the key right there. I said, wait a minute, these crackers got a ritual going on. They got a ritual going on. Then they say, well, they got all these trials. They done went to the Supreme Court. They done been, man, they done been to the highest court in the land on some bullshit, and all of it's fake. But why amass all that power to do some shit and it ain't real because it's like Brother Yehoshua would say, we might not even get out of this shit. Right. Then they go the last thing they said and yesterday, they said this shit is over. He got to concede. Next thing you know, Al go down there in the running and he only like 112 points behind. And they say by the time they get through count by tomorrow, he might be winning this shit. Now let's look at this particular point. We know, now first of all, this is one thing that's also happening. Some say, the night, you know, I don't study that damn shit, you know. But some said, and I said, record the damn election. And when I recorded the election, one brother called me on the phone. He said, you notice what happened? He said, look at the graph. And I said, yeah, I got this shit. I see where you coming from. He said, if you notice, if you take the west part of the doggone part off, because it wasn't really founded yet, or settled, and look at the northern part of, and, and the mid, from, from, from Midwest to the northern part of the United States and look at the doggone blue for Al Gore when they had the chart going on the thing and the red for Bush, it was the same damn states that it was with the fucking Confederacy in the Union. I said, God damn, they got a ritual going on on this shit. And I said, okay, I'm glad I recorded this thing. You see what I'm saying? So they got an elaborate ritual going down. Then they say, hold on. They push this thing, they push this thing, they say, no, the certification will come on 1212, which is the great thing they've been talking about in metaphysics for years. 12 times 12 is 44, 144, which is the apocalypse, 144,000. You see what I'm saying? Then they're talking about also 1218. Well, 18 is 666. Not damn, you know what I'm saying? You know. Which is nine completion, if you know numerology, everything is everything. Yeah. But the 12 12 is key. But when they talk to the guy, they say, Well, yeah, you got 12 12 going down. They say, But last night the guy said, Look, ain't none of this shit gonna be ready by 12 12. <laughs> he said, Ain't none of them gonna be certified by 12 12 based on what happened last night. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, this means that we're locked into, because they say they're going to bring out the Democratic troops. I said, wait a minute, what is this shit here? You know what I'm saying? And you got to study what the elephant mean in African science. And you know what the donkey mean. But what? Jesus rising to Jerusalem? On an ass. Oh, this shit here is going down to what? But it's major stuff. You see what I'm saying? Democracy. Then also you get the word demon from democracy. Democratis. You see, democratis. The whole Greek thing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So there's a whole lot. It's a major ritual going on. Now, meanwhile, 
Uh, first of all, we need to find out why the damn president was even picked in November in the first place. Well, number one, the Greek form of the story that was told in Greek, which is probably this study, this story needs to be studied. You can get the movie Jason and the Argonauts, but this is the Argonautica. They got several versions of this book. It needs to be studied because if you study it, you'll find out that literally Jason and the Argonauts, that the Argo, which means the star Sirius, it's all in the Sirius mystery. It means the star Sirius. Y'all all right? It's supposed to be Jason, which is the form of the Christ, Jah's son. The story comes out of Egypt. It was wrestled out of, uh, some say that it, 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 it predated the Library of Alexandria, but they got a version out of the Library of Alexandria also because the guy, uh, um, um, Apollonius Rose, was the damn curator of the Library of Alexandria. And then he also automatically, automatically comes up with the book, Jason and the Argonauts, called the Argonautica. Now, the story is, and I talked about this in my stuff before, this all has to do with the election. The story is, this guy loses the kingdom, like black people lose, lose the kingdom. And Hera, which is a form of Isis, glory of Heru, the glory of Hera, which is a form of Isis, tells the guy who takes over the kingdom from the righteous ruler, because he kills... Jason's father, when Jason is a child, they take Jason and they take Jason into exile. Same old Jesus shit again. See how these stories kind of pop up and you, you, you read the damn Bible and you think that shit is authentic? But yet we have the same stories over and over and over again. So they have to take Jason and take Jason in exile. And, and Hera tells the, 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 the ruler of the kingdom that one day a one-shoe man, a person with one shoe, going to come and he's going to take back the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? Take back the kingdom. Jason is not going to a certain forest to be reared by a centaur. And a centaur is a man with a horse body. Sagittarius. Now, this is the Jesus Christ story now. He's reared by a centaur, and when he's old enough, he goes back to get, get back his father's kingdom. Meanwhile, in order for him to get back the kingdom, the guy said, I will relinquish the kingdom, but you've got to go get the golden fleece. And the golden fleece is talking about, it's a form of melanin, because it's called chrysomelos, which means the black Christ. Melos means... Uh, Melos means black and it means apple. In the Hercules story, he has to win the golden apples. Well, the golden apples is also the breast of the woman. You see, also, the, the breast of the woman. It's in a book called Ishtar Rising. They get into that, um, Ishtar Rising, um, what's the guy's name? Um, Robert Anton Wilson. Y'all sticking with me on this? But in this mythology, it's the golden fleece, which is this illumined, well, you got the, it's a ram's head, which, you know, Jesus and the lamb, and it also has to do with alchemy, and it has to do with melanin. But he has to go to the end of the earth at a place called Caucasus. Might not be so far removed from Caucasus, the Caucasus Mountains. Well, hell, the white man is the Caucasus Mountains over here ruling shit. But he has to go to the end of the world to get the golden fleece. When he gets to the golden fleece, the king don't want to let it go because the king said, wait a minute. We can't let the golden fleece go because, well, because the golden fleece was in this land. The land became rich because of the golden fleece. Well, you've been in this goddamn land for three, four hundred, five hundred years, and the land is rich because of you being slaves to this damn day. You're just a high class slave now. You see what I'm saying? But the land is rich because they pimped you. Now, and so now they got the damn Hispanic and shit. He's a new slave. Because they exterminate your ass. The key here is, Jason has to go and get on a ship, take 50 Argonauts, which is 50 um, heroes, 
and sail to Caucasus to get the dog on golden feet. Well, the same is any funny how the Jason has to go there and Noah and the Noah Ark. He had to take all these animals and all this kind of shit here. It's the same story, just retold. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's, it's retold. Now, in the spirit of the Kabbalah, they got what is called the 50th gate of understanding. And the 50th gate also got something to do with sex, too. It's 50 gates in the black woman. You know what I'm saying? So, I guess you just add up the goddamn orgasms. And then you got it. Sooner or later, some shit gonna explode. Especially if you get in the nine. You know I talk about the nine orgasms? You know what I'm saying? So, over a couple of months, you're gonna hit 50 if you're knocking some nine orgasms out. But remember, the brother gotta keep his shit up long enough to bring her to that type of thing. And that's the goddamn problem. You gotta keep that mom like this to bring her to that, because that's the mystery. Because when you look at the tree of life, and we showed the tree of life, all that is is a system, a, a, a matrix system of different spheres that's inside of the goddamn makeup of the black woman's vagina. And so inside of her, that's a whole nother civilization, and half of it has never been tapped. You see what I'm saying? And all, because hell, a hundred years ago, they didn't even think women had orgasms. Because this is this white man and his crazy shit that we follow. And remember I talked about that they didn't think that the woman had ejaculation, but they got an African tribe that if, by the time they're 13, they got to eject, the women got to ejaculate on the wall. The wall. You see what I'm saying? Because that was all tapping into the whole G-spot thing. You know what I'm saying? The whole G-spot aspect. That they just now finding out because the white man is so inferior. You see what I'm saying? Even when they talk about Shiva, and Shiva, this is all co coincide now, when Shiva has this dance that he does, and they show Shiva with all these arms, the dance is not the dance, what you think in the, 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 the physical dance, although it, it's an aspect of that, because the aborigines in Africa used to do this dance to go in the dream time. But the dance of Shiva is you dancing inside of that goddamn ass. And the only nigga capable, only person capable of dancing in some ass is the black man. You know what I mean? That white boy, that beat is just not there. He can be as, the best mechanical motherfucker he can if he trained himself, but he still ain't got that beat. You know what I'm saying? Well, nigga, invent some shit on your ass. <laughs> now, I don't know. You gotta, I gotta tell the sisters, I gotta ask the sisters, have a nigga ever invented some shit on your ass in sex? I tell them, you got a brother that know what the fuck he do. Every now and then, you'll go into maximum overdrive and end up in a zone that you never was in before. Yes. Oh, damn. Has anybody experienced this shit before with your white people now? Yes, y'all white people now and shit? <laughs> Have you experienced this shit before? Yes. Well, brother took you there, you said, wait a minute, motherfucker, you ain't never been there before. <laughs> huh? You see what I'm saying? And the brother go, oh shit, I ain't never been there before. And if I keep fucking up, I ain't gonna be there for long. <laughs> okay? This shit is all tied in now. So, Jason goes to get the golden fleece. Jason, which is supposed to be the Christ aspect, is July August, September, October, November. Sagittarius. The golden fleece in the golden fleece in our uh, Aquarian mythology is the Holy Grail, which is the cup that bears the blood of Christ. Well, the cup that bears the blood of Christ, number one, is the pineal gland, but the cup is also the vagina. Going back down, I told you ass, menstrual blood. Yeah. There you go, goddammit. All you gotta do is study. The cup that bears the blood of Christ is the alchemical elixir in the menstrual blood. You see what I'm saying? God, where we put some scholarship on your ass? <laughs> Here's Donald Tyson's new book, Sexual Alchemy. Magical intercourse with spirits, sexual alchemy. And then he's talking about the latent aspects of the mission book because it's full of melanin. You see? So the ram in one thing, but also uh, the hero 
in the Arthurian mythology, he has to get Excalibur. Excalibur comes from the lake. You get the movie, uh, uh, what's the movie, uh, the movie Excalibur. And Excalibur, whoever bears Excalibur, wields Excalibur, is king, is Christ. Well, Excalibur in Hindu mythology is the god Shiva, is the goddamn dick. It's the penis in, 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 in Kemet, the obelisk, the, the penis of Osiris. It's the, it's, it's the lingam of the linga in India, and the vagina is called the yani. And there are two opposite ends of the universe. But in the Arthurian mythology, by the time the Moors get it, it's Excalibur. Who wields Excalibur is Cain. Well, the only motherfucker equipped to wield Excalibur is the black man. That's why his ass in prison. Okay? Now, going back to this thing, we still talk about Sagittarius. Y'all all right? Now, let's go on. Um, now, so I can break this thing down so you'll know what's really going on here. Um... Hold on, I'm gonna get the right thing here. Okay, let's see here. Uh, well, I, I, in order to go into this particular part, I'm gonna have to go into what happened with me and my damn ordeal on my birthday. Now, on my birthday, and this is interesting. Um, my business partner Deborah had her birthday in Sagittarius on the 22nd. She told me, because I remember I told you I said that um, that the Martin Luther King's Martin Luther King's street starts in the Confederate graveyard. So she said, well, you need to take me to this so I can see this street coming out of the Confederate graveyard. So we went to the Confederate graveyard so I could show her the street. When we got there, she said, let's go inside. I said, well, damn, I never thought about that shit. <laughs> you know, I think it's a white graveyard, what's the point? So we go inside, and all kind of energy hits. Well, there's a story to this whole shit. So we split hang around up in there, and the energy hits. They tell Delbra, don't leave until you all find both of your birthdays in a family plot or in a tombstone. So who's looking at an individual tombstone around up on a family plot? Her birthday is November 22nd, mine is November 28th, which also represents 50. There's 50 gates or 50 gates of understanding. There's also 50 oarsmen on the ship of Argo, and Argo means Sagittarius, also means the star Sirius. Okay. We go into the graveyard, we hang around for about a damn hour. The energy is very strong. I say, God damn. Well, this ain't no average graveyard. They got pyramids, they got obelisks, they got mausoleums that look like Egyptian temples. But I was like, with just the sacred architecture alone. I'm going out to damn Houston the next day. She calls, she said, wait a minute, I got something, something going on here. She said, I can't get this graveyard out of my mind. She said she went and got on the internet and come to find out they got black bodies up in there. Even the guy who started Mars Brown is buried up in there. A lot of you black entrepreneurs is buried up in there from the turn of the century. Okay. So, the spirit tells me that she needs to go to the doggone graveyard on her birthday. So I said, you need to go to the graveyard, and that's what the Spirit told me. We go to the graveyard, we go in the office, there's a brother up in there, in his early 40s. He said, man, I'm so glad to see you all. He said, because, you know, we don't never get no black visitors. You know how y'all are in damn graveyards. <laughs> we said, we're looking for the black section. He said, y'all was, you all was just near it. It's in the back of the graveyard. He says, there's 12,000 bodies. They got that 12 again. Buried in the graveyard. Now, I say, well, now, I see what's going on. These crackers was no doggone pipe people 
chewing tobacco crackers. Remember, those were pork crackers that wasn't able to own slaves. These aristocratic crackers that was rich as the one that owned slaves, and they was all Masons. And you know, black Masons and white Masons are different than black Masonry. So they know that it's a ritual that if you're going to be buried, you got to be buried, but you got to have some slaves to be buried also when they die. Or you kill a motherfucker so he can be buried with you. Could very well be that way. Go take a motherfucker out. He died. Go take one out. Because they understand based on the Masonic thing that that's a battery. That's the energy. They you know, understood back then. Well, if we don't get to hell, we got to have a black person beside us. You see what I'm saying? Our favorite house, Negro, or whatever. So they even had a slave's rope that they pulled up and they put all that together and put it all in the back of the cemetery. So that's 12,000 bodies now. 12,000 bodies that they show some noblemen, they got a page full. But not 12,000 bodies mean they got to be slaves. Because it's Confederate graveyard. Okay? But this whole shit ain't got nothing to do with no, um, uh, uh, with, with no damn pole crackers that don't like black people. This shit got something to do with Britain because the Confederate flag is British. Mm-hmm. And remember, they was hooking up with Britain and that's why the Union had to go together, because they was getting money from the enemy. You see what I'm saying? So, we went up in there and we did a little ritual on her birthday. You know, call out all the doggone ancestors. You see what I'm saying? Call out the ancestors, had the tarot cards and all this stuff here. Did a little ritual, did the same, um, you know, did, did, did the libations and the whole night. Energy hit real powerful. Okay. I said, well, you know, we got to go back up in there on my birthday. On my birthday. Now, it ain't no damn. It's no, uh, it's no, uh, uh, it's no secret that all phones are bug. So, you know, damn well, if a nigga like me, you know, damn well, my shit bug. <laughs> you know, so. We get there about 2 o'clock. They know we going to the doggone thing, but we done, we done discussed the shit on the fucking phone. Yeah. Okay, this time I, I lay out. I lay out this damn thing. I said, well, I'm going for broke this time. Uh, we go there to summon some, we going to summon the dead this time. These black spirits. I go up in there. We start doing the doggone ritual. We got the incense burning. We got the tarot cards. I got the damn babies, the Bojun babies. I got the doggone Apollo spirits, the, 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 the Congo rites. We got the Egyptian shit. We got the elaborate list of the uh, of um the uh we got the elaborate list of the doggone um libations. I got a harvest ritual I'm getting ready to do, and we got this New Orleans book on necromancy to summon the spirits and open up the goddamn West Gate. Yeah. Now, Chroma said, study of the dead. Yeah. So we coming for blood on the ass. Yeah. All right. We get the libations going. We get the ritual going. I start reading the Horus ritual. Strike, strike the master card. Draw, draw the flaming sword. Crown, child, and conquering Lord Horus. A hey, root, the avenger. I start doing the ritual. Next thing we see this, not the FBI, not the police, but the United States Army. We possibly see a damn big ass, big ass helicopter. Mm. One of them Vietnam shits. Drop your ass off. <laughs> a big ass helicopter. Pass by us. Pass by us. Okay, we you know. Okay, we still doing it. You know, it could. We, it, they could have very well been passing by us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Next thing I know, they pass by us. We're in the graveyard. They pass by us. They go down and signal three other helicopters, big ass helicopters, and they're coming at us, straight at us, uh, horizontal, side by side. This is how you know this shit is a maneuver. Deborah is laying on a damn a vault or a grave. We look up, the shit is coming straight at us. Coming straight at us. They ever say, the motherfuckers is coming straight at our ass. I'm saying, whatever you do, don't break the damn ritual. <laughs> don't break the 
ritual. I'm still reading the head room. I'm like, this is battle. So then what they do is they come straight at us, but this is when I know that this shit is coming into attack mode. I said, wait a minute, it's been eight fucking years I've been speaking, and I ain't heard from you. It's a little small thing, but now all of a sudden, this damn election is shut down, and there's some shit that's very serious going on. Okay. They're coming at us, three of them, so if they start to shooting or something, they'll hit each other. So what they did is they got in a vertical lineup. It was horizontal, side by side. They come, they swoop down over the graveyard and they get in a vertical line of three of them, three big ass ones with the goddamn doors open. Mm. They tell damn devil they can kill y'all, they, they can shoot y'all ass right now. They come up, they side by side with the doors open, they low as hell. I'm saying, I, I, there was no fear. I'm saying, shit, I'm doing the damn harsh ritual. I got 12,000 goddamn souls here. Let's do this shit. <laughs> you know, now, what's happening is, immediately I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Maybe they, this is what I'm saying in my head. Maybe they're going to shoot my ass. Well, I was like, goddamn, I'm happy. Hell, after fucking eight years of nothing, motherfucker, bring some firepower or something. Remember? Because the first thing popped in my head is Kundalini for a new age, go up with Krishna. First thing popped in my head, there are devices that are inside of the body that will come online when the, when the body suspects annihilation in a certain cycle. I'm like, well, goddamn, the legend down? I'm like, I hope some goddamn bullets bust a nigga right in his ass. And I say, it can be on. This is the way I'm thinking. I'm reading the heart of Krishna. I didn't even tell her. I know she might have got a little upset and shit about it. But I didn't tell her that I was a crazy motherfucker. I was hoping that they start shooting up in that shit and put one right dead in the crack of my ass. Because I'm thinking, they had a vice in the I said, motherfucker, I'm going to finally get my damn shot with this bullshit. It's on. This is what I'm thinking. That's why I was steady reading. She was like, Bobby, you motherfuckers are coming straight at us. She was like, wait, Bobby, these motherfuckers is coming straight at us. They didn't pass over, they got on the side so they can have clear shots. Now, let's not be funny with this mess. United States government don't come out with the big guns and go home empty-handed. First of all, covert action is the number one game. Conspire and kill them quietly. The only time they coming out with the big games, that means the war on. It's over now. All the goddamn options have been exhausted. Now remember now, at the beginning of the year, we had the conference. The master's conference. College shows up talking shit. We get the tape from Conscious Roster in May, and Conscious Roster says... That I purposely got with Colin, I got the fucking tape. I don't have to lie on this stink ass motherfucking Mr. Stink Man. Conscious roster black ass. Cause I got, cause we got the goddamn tape, Harlem, New York. I was in Harlem one month. Conscious roster came two weeks behind me. So motherfucker, we got the tape. I don't have to sit up here and lie on that goddamn stink ass nigga. We got the tape where Conscious Roster said, I purposely went down to Atlanta, I called Colin, and we purposely went down to sabotage the conference. Now fuck the dumb shit, we got the tape, so I don't have to lie on nobody. We got the tape. He said, we purposely went down to sabotage the conference. Me and Debra had talked about the shit. A sister in Bethlehem they talk about it. I was waiting on it because I knew this shit was coming before it even happened. The day of the conference, Ginger jogging down the street, she see a black dead dog on the side of the damn street. Right before we get ready to go to the conference, the damn dead dog is alive and on our front porch. Ginger's like, that motherfucker was dead this morning. Pretty dog. We fed the dog and the dog got like it ain't in a thousand years. And I say, if we come back and we never say, I say, I done fed this dog good. You know how it is, you feed a motherfucking dog. That motherfucker ain't going nowhere. 
I say, if this dog ain't here when we get back, because it was something spiritual about it, it looked like a ghost. Ghost dog. It's a movie about ghost dog. Okay. Huh? In South Carolina, it's a, uh, in this little small town called um, Maven, they got this uh, ghost, a happy dog. Happy dog. Yeah. And it's in the books, it's in the history books. Okay. So, we go, and I say, if this dog ain't here, when we come back, that dog is a spirit. Everything lining up that day, we watching Godfather. Motherfucker say, the person gonna come and set up a meeting. And the one who comes, they're setting up a meeting to kill you. Mm-hmm. And the one who comes to you telling you, we're going to do this meeting, that's the motherfucker sold you out. And Fish comes and tells him, the guy that played on, on um, Barney, Miller. Barney Miller comes and tells him, say, we're setting up this meeting. They say, oh, you okay, you the sellout. We, we, we watching this shit, me and Ginger watching this shit right before. I said, oh, and see what happened was, uh, I wasn't going to the damn night that Carly had spoke. I spoke the night before. So I wasn't going to the con. And some say, Spirit said, you need to go. Ginger said, we need to go to this thing. Because apparently the sabotage was going to come. They were going to talk a whole bunch of shit, but I showed up. So they really didn't get the shit talk off. People was like, what's your goddamn point? He <laughs> really didn't get the shit talk off. You see what I'm saying? Because I showed up. And they be been seeing, I'm telling you, I know some fear, and I'll be like, wait a minute, hold on. We can talk some shit, but you know that damn nigga be talking about goddamn Satan. He be talking about that dark side. And in our subconscious mind, we really don't know what that motherfucker know. So I showed up, and I believe, motherfucker, like, wait a minute, now that nigga talk about that dark side. We don't know that motherfucker there might be real. So for some reason, the shit didn't go off. And the next day, I just plain handled the shit on the damn podium. I missed it. I really hate I missed it. You know, they got the panel discussion. You know, because they was going to try to do the shit then. You see what I'm saying? And I'm tra- and, and we, we call motherfuckers out tonight. Fuck this dumb shit. Uh-oh. Let's go for blood. Because it was goddamn Henry D. Bernardo that invited the motherfucker. You see? That invited. Conscious Roster right there on his little computer and shit. Well, we already got him saying that uh, he purposely set up the thing set up a, a call and said they were going to set up the lecture. But Carl had said to him and D. Bernardo, said, hey, man, they got this conference. You need to be down there. Well, what the fuck? He ain't metaphysics. That's right. Well, you're going to come down there with black people and sabotage a conference. Right. You see what I'm saying? But I said, see, I already knew it. I said, well, wait a minute. And there's one thing happened. Um, I said, no, I know what I'm going to say. Because, see, I, you know me, I was getting ready to goddamn go in there and start talking shit. But Leola Africa was the only one sitting amongst them on that side that was neutral. And Leola called me and that thing he says, key tomorrow that there don't be no mudslinging. And I said, you right. Like, you the Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Say, it's key that there don't be no mudslinging. You see what I'm saying? He just so happened to end and I got my babies going. I'm laughing and shit. You motherfucker come up in there and take the candles and settle on. I, I already did the damn opposite. I did the, my, my lecture before they came in for the dog and panel discussion. I done pulled the libation. I done burnt the incense, so the goddamn room is mine because I fucking libated the shit. I got the the, 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 the vevees going, I got the candles going. I done pulled a big old glass of Maya's rum, and Collie come and sit down right behind the glass of Maya's rum. I'm laughing because the shit is on the damn tape. So the whole time I know it's going, I said, wait a minute. We're going to go through parliamentary procedure, but this is the thing that I don't understand because this is what is curious about me. Y'all all right? Now listen, because this is all, let me show you. When I get there to set up that morning, one eat your bass, because first of all, Collett was supposed to be the moderator. Deborah comes and says, I'm setting Collett down tomorrow. We're going to put one eat. So when we come there, one eat comes up and says, hey, brother, we're going to get to the bottom of this. And I say, no, one eat. I said, no, Juanit. I said, you know how my people are. I said, nothing really went down. Ain't nothing to get to the bottom. If I'm not upset, ain't nothing to really get to the bottom. I said, you know how our people are. We can say some profound stuff. Our people are like grown-up children at large. <laughs> Pathological grown-up children at large. Primitive children. You know what they say? You can say some profound shit, 
and you curse, that child got the curse word. He know all the curse words. He don't hear nothing else you got to, but he know the curse words. He got it. Well, it's the same thing with our people. You can be saying some profound metaphysical stuff, but you say some ignorant stuff, they got that. You know, oh, Bob, they got that. I said, no, our people will take that shit on. I said, we're not even going to go that way. You see what I'm saying? We're not even going to go that way. One, he says, cool. Okay? We get to the podium. Why he comes out and say, we need to get to the bottom of this? What? What the fuck going on? I said, okay, motherfuckers coming out the woodwork. Why didn't he get on the podium? Now, here's the person that they sat down calling for. They put him up there. Why didn't he get on the podium and says, we need to get to the bottom of this? If I said, no, I'm already, I already know what to say to fuck him up. I said, no, put up the little list, and this said, the panel discussion discussing solutions for the millennium. I said on the tape, I said, we're going by parliamentary procedures. We're going to discuss the solution for the millennium because if we say something ignorant, the people going to get that and they're not going to hear the change and they paid the money. And the people was like, yes, yes, you're right. Let's go on and get down with the real deal stuff to discuss the shit for the millennium. That's right, that's right. All right. We get up. Next thing we know, the, f- the first person that come up to the microphone is the brother Yoel from fucking, we call out the goddamn names. Right. This nigga been in the hallway three days. We ain't seen him in the conference. This nigga been selling books outside for three damn days. All of a sudden, he the first nigga up to the microphone saying, "Uh uh-uh, I think we need to get to the bottom of this. I said, wait a minute. What the fuck going on here? Now, the the, the sister up in Bethlehem already said, you're going into a den of rattlesnakes. Delta had a friend that dreamed that they was going to do that, get your hand out the pocket shit and try to shoot a nigga. You know, they got the black campus all over the motherfucking place. All right? First of all, it's, it's, it's spiritual because I had my rebuttal the next day and I said all the shit in my rebuttal in the damn shit. The black Panther motherfuckers cheering me on, they didn't even know I was rebutting the shit that Colin had said and they didn't even know the shit. So, I get the dream, they're going to shoot a goddamn nigga, they're going to try I tell D, tore your black ass. Three weeks before, D said, you sure? I said, D, God damn, this Bob him that you talking to. For the mere fact, I'm telling you, I'm already handling this shit. You see what I'm saying? Ginger gets it. So, your L comes up and say, we need to get to the bottom. And I said, God damn, your ass ain't been in this motherfucker. Ain't been up in here all three days. And somebody must have radioed, God damn it, he done struck them all down. You better get your ass up in there. <laughs> he comes up to the shit, we need to get to the bottom. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is a grand sabotage. Just then, why me goes again? Yeah, yeah, we need to get to the bottom of this. I said, wait a minute, this ain't no fucking press conference. Gotta right. explain nothing. None of y'all goddamn niggas up in here. <laughs> you gonna get to the bottom, you ain't you gonna get to the bottom without me. I already know the goddamn crowd be like, oh, fuck that. They ain't handling that shit. Then we squashed it, and the morale got low, and the next thing we you know, Colin left, and all of them got up, and they, you know, well, well Laila had to leave, you see what I'm saying, and Colin left, and I squashed that. But we got my, so we're talking about a sabotage. I said, wait a minute, eight years ain't got nothing, 2,000 come. So, Punisher's roster goes up to damn Detroit, tell somebody, that I said he was a clone. I said, wait a minute. I don't even know your black ass. I only knew you for a goddamn year. The fuck? Then he calls Laila. Somebody crying. Bobby called me a clone. So Laila calls Deborah saying, what the hell going on? The Bobby said, his name, you know, call, or, you know, call, call a clone and all. And she was like, um, no, you know, and I'm saying, damn. He said this on a damn Wednesday. I go to damn L.A. He's coming to the, what that place they, they do on Friday nights? Talking to him on Friday nights out there. Uh, yeah. He come there, he go, 
Is that brother Bobby? He come and run up hugging me. I'm like, well, goddamn, this don't look like a motherfucker was trying two days ago. He said, I called him a clone. You know what I'm saying? I called him a clone. Okay. So he calls and comes down. My man already told me, we got your boy coming to New York. We're going to put him on the spot about the shit. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to try to make it like it's comfortable, like we're friendly about it. So when he comes, he'll give us all the stuff. He said, yeah, I purposely. We went down to sabotage the conference. You see what I'm saying? We went down to sabotage the conference and stuff like this. But the shit didn't go off. Now, I'm saying when all this stuff is going down, uh, then the rumor get out, Bobby was in doggone Detroit. No, no, no. Khaled threatened Bobby in Detroit. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Khaled, I ain't been in no damn Detroit with no damn Khaled. I was in Detroit the week after the doggone lecture. Me and Delbert Blair, but Khaled wasn't there. I said, oh, okay, this is this old nation of Islam operation dirty trick shit. Go and tell. tell shit. You go tell a motherfucker. So I said, oh, I see how it's going to go down. I said, there's two or three people. Henry D. Bernardo was a motherfucker called down to cultural or serious books and said, I heard that Bobby threatened. No, no, that Collett threatened Bobby in Detroit. I said, what kind of shit is this? Told Kevin that Collett threatened Bobby in Detroit. I said, okay, I see what's going on. His operation dirty tricks. This is the cracker behind this shit, too. Cointel Pro. I said, okay, so now when the rumor get back to down Collett, it will be, Bobby said you threatened him in Detroit. I said, I know how this shit going. So I cussed on Collett and got down so bad. So I said, I had a bunch of people around. I said, Collett, there's some Operation Dirty Fricks going on that they said that you threatened me in Detroit. He said, I don't know nothing of it. I said, no, what I'm telling you, when the motherfucker get back to you, it's going to be that Bobby said that you threatened him in Detroit. He said, well, thanks for telling me. I said, no, I got a whole bunch of people so we can see this shit. You got your boys, and I got mine. So I'm telling you now how the motherfucking Operation Dirty Tricks is going down. You see what I'm saying? It's going down. You see? I said, oh, so this shit is going. I said, this cracker is scared. This cracker is scared. Then in October, we start going to damn lectures and nobody showing up, two and three people. And I said, and then, but it's interesting because, uh, uh, it's interesting because they said they got the white boy Horowitz, which do all the age shit, was out there in Shamley or wherever, and no, nobody showed up there. So the white people shit ain't showing. I said, okay, but they're gonna close down all the damn books. So I said, this shit getting hot. But see, they got that heart program where they cut on the damn shit and nobody, Everybody, stay home. Don't know why the hell they staying home. Go get the movie Harrison Bergeron and see all the shit that's going down. Harrison Bergeron. Us and Illuminati movie. Okay. Whole lot of stuff going down. Now, flip side, we back in the graveyard. They flying in. They get right over us. And there are waves <laughs> they go on. Then they circle again. So immediately, you know, the brain, all the reconnaissance, all, all that kind of shit. And yeah, you can say, oh, that nigga there, um, you know, um, they could have probably just been flying over. No, they're flying over now. Wait a minute, hold on. You side by side. If you side by side, why don't you just fly side by side over there? Why are you going to go in vertical, get on the side, and then get a clear shot, you down low, the door's open. But something happened in the graveyard that they got up in that motherfucker and they said, wait a goddamn minute. We getting ready to get fucked up up in here. No more, we got 12,000 souls. But then the curious thing happens and that's why we gotta go back to this. Now, I told you at the beginning of the lecture that I did something in New York City and the good part about this shit you can't say that a nigga is lying because we got this shit on video. <laughs> I'm in Brooklyn, New York at the Slave Theater. Yeah, I, got it on tape. I, got it on tape. 
I tell the people, we do an Egyptian mystery system tape. I tell the people that the, the, tonight we're gonna have a visitor show up. We're gonna have a goddamn spaceship gonna show up right outside of the slave theater. Now, you say this shit crazy? We got the shit on video. That's why we, that's why we're not what we're dealing with now. We can bear witness to the ship, but see, my thing was, is I did all the information on what did I tell you about the spaceship? I told you that the physical spaceship is government. I was in spiritual, like beings. That's what I always say. I make that. Even Pat Robinson said when damn Independence Day came out, he said, we got damn UFO. That, Pat Robinson's a big time Illuminati. Don't sleep on that cracker. He's talking, oh, Jesus, our country is in parallel. Please. You know, that the other day he praying about some goddamn election. I said, look at this bastard here. Big time South Africa supporter of apartheid. Him and Jimmy Swagger and all in practice. All right. So this is what happened. I tell the people in the slave theater, I said, after we get out of here tonight, they're going to be a visitor. Now, clearly... If you tell a bunch of black people that they're going to be a goddamn UFO that's going to show up, and you go outside and you don't deliver, that is scholarly suicide. 